Kawa no Tamaki Ahau, ko Little John Toku Fano, ko James Toku Inala. I'm here today with my wife Kim, while our five year old son Max is back at home with our whanau. Um, and thanks so much for the invitation today. I'm also here with my hand grips. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about my journey uh, with adaptive recreation. Some of the equipment used that's used in adaptive mountain biking and the work that Adapt NTB is doing to enable more people to enjoy recreation. One thing about this story that I'm about to share is it's not unique, um, especially like some, uh, Ross, when talking about the same, same sort of things. Um, around 20% of the population has a disability of some sort, and the common thing among us is that we all spend more time and energy than most trying to figure out how to get by and then enjoy both the built and wild environments. Um, Ross Ormsby, Mark Ingalls, and others have done um, amazing mahi through the over years to get out and enjoy our amazing country. And it's great to be here to continue this conversation to make the outdoors more accessible. After I acquired my injury um, 20 years ago, one of the first things that I was keen to do was to get into sports and recreational activities that I could do with my friends. And one of the few options available back then was adaptive snow sports. With the help of some very dedicated volunteers and access to specialist equipment, it ticked all the boxes. With a little bit of thought and practice, I could get up the hill independently, I could use all the lifts, and I could ski the same runs as my mates. It's perfect. Back then and continuing on today, the Adaptive Sports Programme at Snow Sports New Zealand, and it works to ensure that all the major ski areas are accessible, that there's trained staff, and adaptive equipment available to rent for reasonable rates. The challenge for me with snow sports is that it's a seasonal activity and living in Auckland it's a four hour drive from home so it's not something I could easily do all year round. Before my injury I was into mountain biking so I looked into what was possible in the new world and at that time there were not a lot of practical options for people like me with impaired lower limbs. Stacey Knut in Whistler was riding and still rides a downhill quad bike that he built, uh, which doesn't have any cramps, so he's reliant on gravity and occasionally pushing on the wheels to get across the flat sections. But gravity quads like this aren't practical in New Zealand where you have to pedal up the hills to do them through it. Whistler is a winter and summer mecca for recreation, but outside of riding areas with uh, lifts, uh, this kind of tech doesn't really make trails more accessible. Adaptive hand cycles were another adaptive sport option that I looked into, and these are cranked with your arms, and were originally designed for use on the road. Generally, they're very low, and despite the best efforts of manufacturers, they're a lot heavier than a regular road bike. Um, the low height and the extra width compared to a bicycle means that if you're riding in traffic, it's air racing at best. Uh, and the extra weight, that means that you can't keep up with your mates on the hills. More recently, they've been designed to work on gravel trails, like rail trails, but with the driving wheel at the front, traction going up the hill can be limited, and you have to be very careful on the end of the slopey section. So hand cycles weren't going to be my thing. Uh, life moved on and I set myself a goal of travelling and living in the seas, just like my mates were doing at the time, but with more, mo more mobility aids. So at the time, my recreational activities were more focused on skiing when I was in Canada and travelling. Probably drinking, but mainly travelling. Um, and then a few years later, I came back home, I got into adaptive rowing and, and able body rowing as well. Um, and that's how I met my wife, Kim. It was her idea to see what options might be available for us to have enjoy more time in the outdoors. And while I can ambulate with crutches, um, it's really inefficient and sweet. Um, I'm fine heading off to the gym and keeping fit, but walking anything more than 2Ks is just not my thing at that size. Um, 
aside from borrowing on the building of the scooter at the zoo one day and having to lie that I knew how to operate it, <laughs> I never thought I'd want or need a mobility aid. But from the day the Segway rolled into our lives eight years ago, it was a game changer. It's reasonably compact, it can handle a wide variety of terrain, and it allows me to do recreational activity with my friends and family. Rear rail trails, um, farewell spit, a uh, bit of Abel, Abel Tasman, um, and adventures with Max as he was getting older. We're all made possible by this description, which is uh, pretty weird. Um, the challenge is that it doesn't look like a mobility aid. Odd problem to have. In fact, in 2013, people would slow their cars, wind their windows down, and hurl abuse at me. Uh, for no apparent reason. <laughs> um, maybe they thought I was a rich nerd. <laughs> um, I would roll to work, I'd roll to work on the footpath, and every time I saw a police car, I thought I was worried because I was going to get a ticket. Because no one actually knows if you're allowed to wipe them on the road or footpath or not. And it's never been sorted out. However, I don't have to worry now because electric scooters are littering the streets everywhere, alarming ACC injuries are coming through from them, and there are way bigger issues for the police to worry about. So that's good news from my, from my perspective. In the last couple of years, e bikes of all shapes and sizes have been flying off the shelves, onto the streets, and into the parks. Able building people, that's the 80% are prepared to pay big money for a bike that gives them some assistance up the hills or keep up with their kids. Maybe it allows them to ride from their home to the riding area, go mountain biking and ride home again. Maybe they can commute to work, saving one hour in the morning. The impact and challenges of this technology for stakeholders in parks and recreation are huge and I'm sure that we'll be talking about these later on today. Again, it was Kim who encouraged me to look into whether an electric mountain bike could work for me. And we discovered it was a huge success. In my case, I've got the use of just 20% of muscle groups in my legs, but with a standard mountain bike and some custom foot gear now, um, I'm riding with my truck with my mates and I'm keeping up. So what I believe now is that people who have the most to gain from this digital technology is the 20%, um, the people with a disability. Mark Engels was in the media recently talking about the rail trail he's going to develop and he shares the optimism for the rights of people with disability when he said, I might walk like a duck, but when I'm on a bike, I can fly like a dog. And that's something which is actually pretty cool. The rise of e-bike technology has also had a huge impact on the impact on the design for all terrain adaptive hand cycles. Several manufacturers are designing these for people with lower limb disabilities to access more technical trails. With full suspension, these rigs are pretty hefty um, at around sort of 30, 40 kilograms, but they now include electric assist, which means that they can keep up with the cyclists. The type of bike that anyone can choose depends a lot on people's disability and their experience. Um, and again, we go into the sort of rigs that Ross uses is based on e-bikes. So that's been it's just been this huge push and it's been a massive benefit for the design of this kind of thing. Some adaptive mountain bikes are all electric, no pedals. On the left is my friend Andrew who has been developing the road on over several years to suit his needs. These vehicles are lightweight, easily transported, and are designed to handle a variety of terrain from beach, sand, and bush tracks to cycle paths and parks. In that picture, he was heading up to camp overnight in the Waitakere Ranges, something he hasn't been able to access for many years. And on the right is a bowhead reach, which is presently the most extreme of all the mountain adaptive um, trike available. It's unique because the outfit can lean into corners and negotiate um, really tricky terrain. At this end of the spectrum, it gets more difficult to differentiate between electric wheelchair, ATVs, and dirt bikes. Obviously, the user is out recreating with their friends and whānau, which is great, um, because that's whatever technology you choose, that's the, that's the goal. 
As you can see, the technology to get people out uh, with disabilities out on the trail comes in all shapes and sizes, but works to achieve a really awesome outcome for people with disabilities. Enabling people to get out and enjoy the outdoors alongside their friends and family. I'm pretty excited about the opportunities here, and that is why Kim and I started that interview with Andrew. And in the long term, we'd like to implement a similar model to adaptive snow sports, where we can place equipment at facilities across the way, across the country, with trained staff, accessible trails and facilities, and that would enable the 20% to access our wonderful country with their friends. Adapt NTB is a registered charity, and even though we are relatively new, we have successfully run and been involved in a number of activities, including Crack Roots 2020, Have a Go events, with another one here on Saturday. We haven't attended, but really <laughs> hoping for it. Really hoping for it. Um, we want to build a strong community of adaptive mountain bikers to share their experience and knowledge about the ad adaptations they've made and where to ride. We're building international networks to enable adaptive riders and supporters to meet and grow the society in which we are supporting. For many with disabilities, mountain biking is something they have had to they've either never tried or something they've had to give up. And we want to change that. With the advancements in technology I talked about, riding off-road has become far more achievable to the masses. We're gathering data on the barriers to participation and we will work to address these barriers and measure the outcomes. We are keen to work with recreational mountain bike areas to incorporate universal design features and considerations to reduce barriers to participation. We also want to trial an adaptive trail rating system suited for suitability in New Zealand and bring other organisations in the conversation. Thanks so much for your time and really look forward to the workshop later today.